All right, everybody, welcome back to Pim's Lantern Cave. Uh, doing another uh, YouTube video on Coleman lanterns again. Uh, this video is about what, if you were just starting out, what would be five lanterns or five items that I would suggest that you go ahead and get. Um, obviously, this is going to be highly subjective depending on who you talk to. Um, different experiences for different people, different regions of the country may have different lanterns. Um, I'm coming to you from uh, McDonough, Georgia, um, so I'm going to be talking kind of about things that I find to be readily available. Obviously with the internet there's certainly going to be um, a lot of reach with Facebook and eBay, so you'll see a lot of different lanterns and get lots of different opinions, but I'm going to give you what I think are the best ones and the easiest ones to collect. Also the ones in front of you that I'm showing you are extremely easy to take apart, extremely easy to service. We'll be saving that for another video. We talk about troubleshooting lanterns and um, taking them apart and servicing them to get them operational again. So we're going to start over here on, if you're looking at me, it'll be your left, um, with really options 1A and 1B. Um, Coleman made the 220 and or the 228 lanterns from the early 1930s up until the early 1980s. Um, they went from basically model the A model all the way up through the K model. Um, I would suggest if you're going to start out, these lanterns are extremely common. They're very readily available, easy to work on. Um, they generate a nice amount of light. There are replacement parts for them all over the place. You can get new bales, new ventilators, new frames, new collars, um, all kinds of replacement parts out there for you. The ones with the wider hats are commonly known as the 228s, and the ones with the shorter vents are gonna be your 220. So you have any models that are gonna have these big hats, we refer to as the, that's kind of a nickname for them, is the big hats are gonna be ending in a 228, and then the ones that are shorter are the 220. It's gonna be the same internals, however, the only big change obviously is gonna be the ventilator on top. Um, if you are new to collecting, I would suggest starting out that you only select from either the H, J, or K model. The reason I say that is, is when you go to an earlier model like the E and the F, taking them apart can be a little bit of a bear. Um, they're much more complicated. Coleman kind of simplified the, the design as they came up through the years and realized that servicing them, they could make a little bit more user friendly, not only to their own assembly lines, but to the user. So right in front of you here, you have a 228J. Um, the 228J was the last of the 228s that Coleman made. They did not make a 228K. They stopped this production in, I believe, late 1979. This is the 1979 228J with the big hat. It's a great runner, easy to take apart, very easy to service. This is a 1981 220K. Again, very simple to take apart, very easy to service, very simple up to operate. Um, definitely like these are very they're very readily available you can find some of these sometimes that are never even used they've just been sitting in a box this particular one that you're sitting in front of here has actually never been lit it has sat in the box um, since 1981 it was never lit if you're looking for something a little bit older and you want to find something that maybe has a little bit more history and has been here a little bit longer I would suggest going with either a 242B or a 242C the C is here on your right, the B is going to be on your left with the nickel tank. Again, very simplistic to operate, very simplistic to take apart. Simply just a one bolt is basically what keeps the whole piece together with the collar and the fount. You can take the whole piece off. You can get inside to service the innards if you need to. Um, you can get parts for them. Um, obviously, you can see how these were made in the, the mid 1930s up until about 1950 in the United States. Canadian dates can differ a little bit. We'll get into that in another video. Um, but once again, very simple to take apart. They produce wonderful light. These typically run on a size 21 or a size 99 mantle. Um, and these, like I said, these are a little bit older, so you can kind of be your, um, if you want to get into something that's got a little more history, um, not obviously quite as common as the two that are over here on your left, but these are pretty much available and you can get them at a fair price. Um, moving over towards the number uh, three item that I would like to say that you would collect would be any of the 200A lanterns. 200As were produced from the 1950s up until 1983. They come in either red 
some are there's actually a couple rare ones that are white and then there's other ones that are green there's some variations and changes in color there's a lot of cool history with the 200 again very very easy to take apart very easily to get parts for them just that uh, one simple nut is all that holds the pieces together the the vents are readily available pieces for the tanks uh excuse me the founts um i personally this is my personal favorite um Coleman Lantern, I love the 200s. They produce a great light. They're just a great size, and they're really, in my opinion, the symbol of, of, of Coleman. That's what I relate to them. They're a personal favorite. And like I said, they're, they're very popular. They go pretty quick if the price is right, but you will absolutely love this lantern. It's actually my favorite. And then we go into number four, looking at number four. This kind of gets a little more complicated, but these are a little, these are out there and readily available. Um, this is the Coleman 237. You'll notice inside of here, this is kind of, we haven't really talked about this yet, but if you look inside here, there's actually what's called a preheater cup. And the reason that is because this lantern, if you want to introduce um, yourself to kerosene, this would be a great way to introduce yourself to kerosene. This is a very forgiving lamp, but very rewarding. Extremely bright, has a giant sized 111 mantle in there. It produces brilliant white light. The only difference is, is that when you're using kerosene, you have to actually preheat the lantern and this will give you a great introduction to how to use kerosene it's a little bit greasier a little bit heavier has a much has a uh, a lower lighting point or a lower flash point than coleman white gas all the other lanterns that i've showed you going over towards this side run on white gas and white gas only this is a kerosene lantern and like i said it does have a little bit of a lighting process that's different than these we're going to show that in another video if you're not sure how to use kerosene i will step everybody through the different gas types and the different lighting procedures later. So, and the final thing that I would suggest collecting is not a lantern. It's not a lantern at all. It is the Coleman Collector's Guide from the early 1900s to 1983. This is a fantastic book, as I mentioned in my other video. It gives all different kinds of lanterns from the time that Coleman um, stepped onto the, onto the um, into the game in the 1900s and works all the way up through 1983. The only drawback to this book is that it does not go into the lanterns that are produced after 1983. You'll notice that I did not include any of those lanterns because they run and have completely different systems than the lanterns from the 1980s and the past. They get a little more complicated using Schrader valves, so I didn't include them because they're not quite as simplistic. There's a lot more O-rings and things that go into taking them apart. And I figured to start you out on five lanterns, I figured these would be a good part to stop. Again, great pictures in this book, great descriptions. They go into lamps, they goes into stoves, it goes into brands that are not, that were made by Coleman, but not Coleman. If you can get your hands on one of these books and sit down with a nice cold beer and um, get into some literature, it really is really something for the new collector that um, I think is extremely beneficial. Um, definitely get your hands on one of these. Um, I appreciate your time. I hope you learned something good in this video. Um, if you have any questions, do comment in the comments below, um, and I look forward to doing the next one. We'll see you.